Are you tired of feeling lonely? Wondering why you don't have many friends? Well, you're not alone. In fact, there are countless people out there who are in the same boat. But fear not. In this video, we're going to dive into the 10 reasons behind why you might not have any friends. Have you ever found yourself surrounded by people, yet still feeling isolated? It's a common experience, and it often stems from the environment we're in. Our surroundings play a huge role in shaping our social interactions, and sometimes, they might not be conducive to fostering friendships. Imagine this, you're at a party, but you feel like you don't belong. Maybe it's because you don't share the same interests as the people around you, or perhaps you're just not comfortable in large social gatherings. Whatever the reason, feeling out of place can make it difficult to connect with others. But it's not just about the environment. It's also about how we interact with others. Social skills are like muscles. They need to be exercised regularly to stay strong. If you're lacking in this department, it can be challenging to initiate and maintain friendships. And then there's the fear of rejection. We've all experienced it at some point in our lives. That sinking feeling when someone doesn't respond to our advances or rejects our friendship. It can be a major blow to our self-esteem and make us hesitant to put ourselves out there again. But what if I told you that sometimes it's our own expectations that are holding us back? We live in a world where we're constantly bombarded with images of perfect friendships and social media feeds filled with smiling faces. But real life isn't always like that, and expecting it to be can set us up for disappointment. So, here's the deal. In order to make friends, we need to be willing to step outside of our comfort zones and embrace the messy, imperfect nature of human relationships. It won't always be easy, but the rewards, laughter, companionship, and a sense of belonging are more than worth it. Welcome to Wisdom Woven, where we explore the complexities of the human experience and offer insights to help you navigate life's challenges. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Our goal is to reach 100 likes on this video, so let's make it happen together. Lesson 1. The Influence of Environment Growing up in different environments can greatly impact one's ability to make friends. For some, the environment they're raised in lacks opportunities for social interaction. Imagine a child growing up in a remote area with few neighbors or peers to connect with. Without access to social settings like schools or community centers, making friends becomes challenging from the start. On the other hand, even in bustling cities, certain neighborhoods might not foster a sense of community. In areas where people keep to themselves or where there's a high turnover of residents, it's difficult to establish lasting friendships. Picture an apartment complex where everyone rushes past each other, absorbed in their own lives, never taking the time to connect. Moreover, cultural differences play a significant role. In some cultures, there's a strong emphasis on individualism, which can lead to a lack of communal bonding. In contrast, other cultures prioritize collective harmony, making it easier for individuals to form close-knit friendships from an early age. Family dynamics also come into play. Children who grow up in households where social interactions are limited or discouraged may struggle to develop the necessary skills for building friendships. Conversely, those raised in supportive and sociable families often find it easier to navigate social situations and form meaningful connections. Additionally, economic status can influence social opportunities. Families facing financial hardship may not have the means to participate in social activities or provide their children with extracurricular opportunities where friendships can blossom. This lack of access to social resources can hinder the development of social skills and networks. Furthermore, the prevalence of technology in today's world has transformed how we socialize. While social media and online platforms offer virtual connections, they can also contribute to feelings of isolation and superficial relationships. Spending excessive time online may detract from opportunities to engage in face-to-face -face interactions and build genuine friendships. In summary, 
The environment in which one grows up significantly shapes their ability to make friends. Whether it's the physical surroundings, cultural norms, family dynamics, economic circumstances, or the influence of technology, these factors all contribute to the social landscape in which individuals navigate their friendships. Understanding the impact of these environmental influences is crucial in addressing the root causes of social isolation and fostering a culture of connection and belonging. Lesson 2. Lack of social skills. Do you sometimes feel like you just don't know how to interact with people? That might be one reason why you're struggling to make friends. Social skills are like muscles. They need exercise to grow stronger. If you haven't had much practice, it's natural to feel a bit awkward or unsure in social situations. Imagine you're at a party and everyone seems to be chatting effortlessly while you're standing in the corner feeling out of place. It's not because you're unlikable or unworthy of friendship. It could simply be that you haven't had many opportunities to develop your social skills. But don't worry, social skills can be learned and improved over time. It's all about practice and patience. Start by putting yourself out there more, join clubs, attend social events, or even strike up conversations with strangers. The more you engage with others, the more confident you'll become in social settings. Another aspect of social skills is the ability to listen and empathize. It's not just about talking. It's also about understanding and connecting with others on an emotional level. Practice active listening Pay attention to what others are saying without interrupting or thinking about what you'll say next. Body language is another crucial aspect of social skills. It's amazing how much we communicate non-verbally through our gestures, facial expressions, and posture. Make sure your body language is open and inviting, signaling that you're approachable and interested in conversation. One common mistake people make is focusing too much on themselves during conversations. Remember, it's not all about you. Show genuine interest in others by asking questions and showing empathy. People appreciate when you take the time to listen and understand their perspective. Another important social skill is knowing when and how to assert yourself respectfully. It's okay to have boundaries and express your opinions, but it's essential to do so in a way that doesn't alienate others. Finding the right balance between assertiveness and tactfulness is key to building healthy relationships. If you struggle with social skills, don't be afraid to seek help. There are plenty of resources available, from books and online courses to therapy and support groups. Remember, everyone has room for improvement and there's no shame in asking for assistance. In summary, Lack of social skills can be a significant barrier to making friends. But with practice, patience, and a willingness to learn, you can overcome this obstacle and cultivate meaningful connections with others. So, don't be discouraged. Embrace the opportunity to grow and develop your social skills. Lesson 3. Fear of Rejection Do you ever feel like you're not good enough for others? That fear of rejection can be a major reason why you might not have many friends. It's like standing on the edge of a cliff, afraid to take that leap of faith into forming new connections. But why does this fear grip us so tightly? Imagine you're at a party, surrounded by people laughing and chatting away. You muster up the courage to join a conversation, but then a voice inside your head whispers, what if they don't like me? That fear paralyzes you, making it difficult to engage and connect with others. We all want to be accepted and valued by our peers. Rejection stings like a bee, leaving behind scars that remind us of our vulnerabilities. Maybe you've experienced rejection before, and now you're hesitant to put yourself out there again. It's natural to want to shield yourself from pain, but sometimes, that fear holds us back from forming meaningful friendships. Think about a time when you didn't get invited to a social gathering or when someone ignored your message. It's like a punch to the gut, leaving you feeling unworthy and alone. Over time, these experiences can build a wall around your heart, making it challenging to let others in. But here's the thing. Rejection is not a reflection of your worth. 
It's simply a part of life, like the ebb and flow of the tide. Just because someone doesn't see your value doesn't mean you're any less deserving of love and connection. It's important to remember that everyone faces rejection at some point, and it doesn't define who you are as a person. Instead of letting fear dictate your actions, try embracing rejection as a learning opportunity. See it as a chance to grow and evolve rather than a setback. Remember, the people who truly belong in your life will accept you for who you are, flaws and all. So, the next time you feel that familiar pang of fear creeping in, take a deep breath and remind yourself that you are worthy of love and belonging. Don't let the fear of rejection hold you back from forming genuine connections with others. After all, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Lesson 4. Unrealistic Expectations Do you ever wonder why you struggle to make friends? Maybe it's because your expectations are set too high. Picture this. You meet someone new, and immediately you expect them to be your soulmate. Someone who understands you completely and shares all your interests. But reality often falls short of these lofty ideals. Think about it. How many people can actually meet such high standards? By setting unrealistic expectations for friendship, you might inadvertently push people away. Instead of appreciating the unique qualities others bring, you focus on what they lack, leading to disappointment and isolation. It's like expecting every meal to be a five-star gourmet feast. Sure, it's nice to dream, but in the end, you'll miss out on the simple joys of a homemade sandwich or a cozy bowl of soup. Similarly, by expecting every friendship to be flawless, you miss out on the beauty of genuine connections, flaws and all. Consider adjusting your expectations. Instead of seeking perfection, embrace the imperfections that make each person unique. Remember, friendships aren't about finding someone flawless. They're about finding someone whose flaws you can accept and appreciate. Imagine if you judged every book by its cover, you'd miss out on countless amazing stories. Similarly, if you judge potential friends based solely on superficial traits or first impressions, you'll miss out on the chance to discover their true depth and character. So, next time you meet someone new, give them a chance to surprise you. Instead of expecting them to tick all the boxes on your friendship checklist, approach them with an open mind and a willingness to get to know them for who they truly are. It's like planting a seed and expecting it to bloom into a fully grown tree overnight. Friendships, like trees, take time to grow and develop. Rushing the process or expecting instant results only leads to disappointment and frustration. Remember, friendships aren't one-size-fits-all. Just because someone doesn't meet your expectations in one area doesn't mean they can't enrich your life in other ways. Be open to discovering unexpected connections and hidden gems in unlikely places. It's like expecting every puzzle piece to fit perfectly the first time. Sometimes it takes trial and error, patience and perseverance to find the right fit. Similarly, building friendships requires effort, understanding, and a willingness to navigate the bumps along the way. So, instead of fixating on what's missing, focus on what's there. Appreciate the moments of laughter, the shared interests, and the genuine connections that make each friendship unique. By adjusting your expectations and embracing the journey, you'll open yourself up to a world of meaningful connections and fulfilling relationships. Lesson 5. Self-Centered Behavior Do you ever find yourself so caught up in your own world that you forget to consider others? It's easy to fall into the trap of self-centered behavior without even realizing it. Think about it. When was the last time you truly listened to someone else without waiting for your turn to speak? Self-centeredness can push potential friends away. People want to feel heard and valued in a friendship, not like they're just an audience for your monologue. Imagine if every conversation you had revolved solely around someone else's interests or experiences, wouldn't you start to feel disconnected too? It's not just about talking, though. Self-centered behavior can also manifest in actions. 
Are you always the one making plans, expecting others to follow your lead? Or perhaps you constantly seek attention and validation, leaving little room for others to shine. But here's the thing, friendships thrive on reciprocity. It's about give and take, not just take. When you're solely focused on your own needs and desires, it's hard to build meaningful connections with others. Now, don't get us wrong. Taking care of yourself is important, but there's a fine line between self-care and self-centeredness. It's about finding that balance between honoring your own needs and being mindful of the needs of those around you. One way to combat self-centered behavior is by practicing empathy. Put yourself in someone else's shoes and try to understand where they're coming from. Ask questions, show genuine interest, and be willing to compromise. Another key aspect is self-awareness. Take a step back and reflect on your interactions with others. Are you dominating the conversation? Do you tend to prioritize your own agenda over others? Recognizing these patterns is the first step towards change. Remember, building friendships is a two-way street. It requires effort, understanding, and a willingness to put aside your own ego from time to time. So next time you catch yourself veering towards self-centered behavior, pause and ask yourself, how can I make space for others in this moment? By fostering a more inclusive and empathetic attitude, you'll not only attract new friends, but also deepen your existing relationships. After all, true connection is about sharing the spotlight, not hogging it all for yourself. Lesson six, difficulty in trusting others. Building trust is fundamental in any relationship, yet it can be challenging for some individuals. Trust forms the foundation of friendships, but when it's lacking, connections become fragile. This difficulty in trusting others often stems from past experiences where trust has been betrayed or broken. Imagine a child who, after being let down by a friend, finds it hard to confide in others. This reluctance to trust can persist into adulthood, affecting their ability to form meaningful connections. Without trust, friendships struggle to flourish. In Buddhism, trust is considered essential in cultivating harmonious relationships. The teachings emphasize the importance of trust not only in others but also in oneself. However, Past traumas or disappointments can create barriers to trust, hindering one's social interactions. These barriers manifest in various ways, such as skepticism, suspicion, or fear of vulnerability. Individuals may distance themselves from others to avoid potential hurt, inadvertently isolating themselves further. Overcoming this difficulty requires introspection and healing. Buddhism offers practices such as mindfulness and compassion to address underlying emotional wounds. By nurturing self-trust and compassion, individuals can gradually open themselves up to trusting others again. Moreover, communication plays a crucial role in building trust. Honest and transparent dialogue fosters understanding and strengthens bonds. By expressing concerns and setting boundaries, Individuals can navigate relationships with greater ease. It's important to acknowledge that trust takes time to develop. Rushing into friendships without a solid foundation can lead to disappointment. Patience and understanding are key virtues in fostering trust and nurturing authentic connections. Additionally, practicing forgiveness is vital in overcoming past betrayals. Holding on to grudges only perpetuates feelings of mistrust and resentment. By forgiving others and ourselves, we release the burden of past hurts and pave the way for healing. Cultivating trust also involves taking risks. Opening up to others requires vulnerability, but it's through vulnerability that genuine connections are formed. By stepping out of our comfort zones, we create opportunities for deeper, and more fulfilling relationships. In conclusion, difficulty in trusting others can be a significant barrier to forming friendships. However, with self-awareness, communication, and a willingness to take risks, it's possible to overcome this challenge. 
By embracing trust as a cornerstone of relationships, individuals can cultivate meaningful connections rooted in authenticity and mutual respect. Lesson 7. Communication Barriers Communication is the heartbeat of friendship, but sometimes it feels like we're speaking different languages. Ever found yourself struggling to express your thoughts or feeling misunderstood? You're not alone. Communication barriers can be major roadblocks on the path to making friends. Lost in translation. Have you ever said something innocent only to have it taken the wrong way? Miscommunication can stem from cultural differences, linguistic nuances, or simply different life experiences. Fear of vulnerability. Opening up can be scary. We often fear judgment or rejection. So we hide behind a mask of indifference or silence, keeping others at arm's length. Listening skills. Effective communication isn't just about speaking. It's also about listening. If you're too focused on waiting for your turn to speak, you might miss out on truly understanding the other person. Body language. Did you know that most communication isn't verbal? Our body language speaks volumes, sometimes contradicting what we say. Being aware of your body language and interpreting others' cues can bridge gaps in understanding. Technology versus face-to-face. -face. In today's digital age, it's easy to hide behind screens. While technology connects us, it can also create barriers to meaningful communication. Nothing beats the warmth of face-to-face -face interaction. Assumptions and jumping to conclusions. Ever assumed you knew what someone meant, only to realize you were way off? Jumping to conclusions can lead to misunderstandings and hurt feelings. Fear of conflict. Conflict is inevitable in any relationship, but many of us shy away from it. Avoiding difficult conversations can lead to unresolved issues simmering beneath the surface. Expressing emotions. Some of us struggle to put our feelings into words, whether it's anger, sadness, or joy. Finding the right words to express our emotions can be challenging. Cultural differences. What's considered polite in one culture may be rude in another. Understanding and respecting cultural differences can prevent unintentional offense. Overthinking. Ever replayed a conversation in your head? Analyzing every word? Overthinking can paralyze us, making us hesitant to reach out or express ourselves. Social anxiety. For some, the mere thought of social interaction triggers anxiety. Social anxiety can make it difficult to engage in conversations or participate in social activities. Assuming others' intentions. We're not mind readers, yet we often assume we know what others are thinking or feeling. These assumptions can create barriers to genuine communication. Lack of assertiveness. Assertiveness is about expressing your needs and boundaries while respecting others. Without it, you might find yourself constantly sacrificing your own desires to please others. Being inauthentic. Trying to fit in by pretending to be someone you're not only creates distance between you and others. Authenticity fosters genuine connections. Poor conflict resolution skills. Conflict is an opportunity for growth, but only if handled constructively. Without effective conflict resolution skills, disagreements can escalate, damaging relationships. Inability to apologize. We all make mistakes, but not everyone knows how to apologize sincerely. A genuine apology can mend even the most strained relationships. Assuming similarity. Just because someone shares your interests doesn't mean you'll automatically click. Building friendships requires more than common hobbies. It requires mutual understanding and respect. Distractions. In a world full of distractions, it's easy to be physically present but mentally absent. Put down your phone and give your full attention to the person in front of you. Feeling unheard. Have you ever felt like no one truly listens to you? Feeling unheard can lead to frustration and loneliness, driving a wedge between you and others. Avoiding small talk. While small talk may seem superficial, it's often the gateway to deeper conversations. 
Don't underestimate the power of casual chit-chat in building connections. Lesson 8. Neglecting Relationships Neglecting relationships is like leaving a garden untended. Without care and attention, it withers away. In the hustle and bustle of life, it's easy to get caught up in our own pursuits, forgetting to nurture the connections that truly matter. But why do we do this? Often, it's because we prioritize other aspects of our lives, work, hobbies, or personal goals, over investing time and effort into maintaining friendships. Imagine a scenario. You have a friend who always makes you laugh, who listens to your problems without judgment, and who you genuinely enjoy spending time with. But as life gets busier, you start canceling plans, forgetting to return calls, and gradually drifting apart. Eventually, you realize that you've neglected this precious friendship, and now it feels strained and distant. This neglect can stem from various sources. Sometimes, it's unintentional. We simply get caught up in our own lives and fail to recognize the importance of nurturing friendships. Other times, it's a result of prioritizing quantity over quality. We may have many acquaintances but few deep, meaningful connections. Moreover, neglecting relationships can also be a defense mechanism. It's easier to withdraw and isolate ourselves than to confront the complexities of human interaction. We may fear vulnerability or rejection, so we keep others at arm's length, unknowingly sabotaging our chances of forming lasting friendships. In the digital age, social media can exacerbate this problem. We may mistake likes and comments for genuine connection, but in reality, they often serve as superficial substitutes for meaningful interaction. Behind the screen, we can curate a carefully crafted image of ourselves, but this facade only serves to further isolate us from authentic human connection. Furthermore, neglecting relationships can have profound effects on our mental and emotional well-being. Humans are inherently social creatures, and without meaningful connections, we may experience feelings of loneliness, depression, and anxiety. Research has shown that loneliness can be as detrimental to our health as smoking or obesity, highlighting the importance of cultivating strong social bonds. But it's never too late to rekindle neglected relationships. It starts with acknowledging the importance of connection and making a conscious effort to prioritize them in our lives. This may involve reaching out to old friends, scheduling regular catch-ups, or simply being present and attentive in our interactions. By investing time and energy into nurturing our relationships, we not only enrich our own lives, but also contribute to the well-being of those around us. After all, as the saying goes, a friend is one who knows you and loves you just the same. So let's not neglect the precious friendships that enrich our lives. Let's cultivate them with care and intention. Lesson 9. Emotional Baggage Have you ever felt like you're carrying a heavy load on your shoulders, but you can't quite put your finger on what it is? That weight might be the emotional baggage we accumulate throughout our lives. Think about it. Every disappointment, every hurtful word, every betrayal leaves a mark on us. Sometimes, without even realizing it, we carry these burdens into our interactions with others. Imagine you're walking through life with a suitcase. Each negative experience adds another item to that suitcase until it becomes too heavy to carry comfortably. These emotional burdens can affect how we perceive and interact with the world around us, including our ability to make and maintain friendships. For instance, let's say you had a friend who betrayed your trust in the past. Even though you've moved on, that experience might have left you with a lingering sense of distrust towards others. So, when you meet new people, you might subconsciously keep them at arm's length, afraid of getting hurt again. Moreover, unresolved issues from our past can manifest in our present behavior. Perhaps you grew up in an environment where you didn't receive much affection or validation. As a result, you might seek out friendships that validate your worth, constantly seeking approval and reassurance from others. Additionally, 
Unresolved conflicts or traumas can lead to emotional barriers that prevent us from forming deep connections with others. Maybe you experienced a painful breakup or the loss of a loved one, and you're still grappling with the emotional aftermath. These unresolved emotions can create a barrier between you and potential friends, making it difficult to open up and trust others. Furthermore, our past experiences shape our beliefs about ourselves and the world. If you faced rejection or bullying in the past, you might develop a negative self-image and believe that you're unworthy of love and friendship. These limiting beliefs can sabotage your efforts to connect with others, creating a self-fulfilling prophecy where you inadvertently push people away. Moreover, the fear of vulnerability can also contribute to emotional baggage. Opening up to others requires courage and trust, but if you've been hurt before, you might hesitate to let your guard down. Instead, you might put up walls to protect yourself, inadvertently isolating yourself from potential friendships. Furthermore, unresolved emotions can also affect our ability to empathize with others. If you're consumed by your own pain or struggles, it can be challenging to empathize with the experiences of others. As a result, you might unintentionally come across as self-absorbed or indifferent, making it difficult to forge meaningful connections with others. Moreover, unresolved emotions can also affect our ability to empathize with others. If you're consumed by your own pain or struggles, it can be challenging to empathize with the experiences of others. As a result, you might unintentionally come across as self-absorbed or indifferent, making it difficult to forge meaningful connections with others. But here's the thing. Acknowledging and addressing our emotional baggage is the first step towards healing and building healthier relationships. It's okay to seek support from friends, family, or a therapist to work through past traumas and unresolved emotions. By unpacking our emotional baggage, we can lighten the load and make room for new connections and friendships to blossom. So, if you find yourself struggling to connect with others, take a moment to reflect on your past experiences and how they might be influencing your present behavior. Remember, you deserve to have fulfilling friendships, but it starts with being willing to confront and heal from your emotional baggage. Lesson 10, the illusion of perfection. In a world where filters and facades dominate social media, it's easy to get trapped in the illusion of perfection. We constantly compare ourselves to others, feeling inadequate because our lives don't seem as flawless as theirs. This obsession with perfection seeps into our friendships, making us hesitant to connect with others for fear of not measuring up. When we believe we need to be flawless to have friends, we set ourselves up for disappointment. No one is perfect, and expecting ourselves to be is setting an unrealistic standard. Authentic connections are built on acceptance and understanding, not on projecting a flawless image. Buddhism teaches us the beauty of imperfection. The concept of wabi-sabi celebrates the beauty of impermanence and imperfection. Embracing our flaws and vulnerabilities allows us to connect with others on a deeper level. When we let go of the need to appear perfect, we create space for genuine connections to flourish. Perfectionism also leads to self-criticism and fear of failure. We're so afraid of making mistakes that we avoid taking risks and putting ourselves out there. But growth happens outside of our comfort zones. By embracing our imperfections, we free ourselves from the shackles of perfectionism and open ourselves up to new experiences and connections. Moreover, the pursuit of perfection can be exhausting. We're constantly striving for an unattainable ideal, draining our energy and leaving little room for genuine connection. When we let go of the need to be perfect, we can relax and be ourselves, allowing others to see us for who we truly are. Instead of striving for perfection, we should strive for authenticity. Authenticity is magnetic. It draws people to us because it's relatable and genuine. When we embrace our imperfections, we give others permission to do the same, fostering deeper and more meaningful connections. In the end, it's our imperfections that make us human and relatable. 
Rather than hiding them, we should embrace them as part of who we are. By letting go of the illusion of perfection, we can cultivate genuine connections and find true friendship based on acceptance and understanding. Now that we've explored the reasons behind why you might find yourself without friends, it's important to remember that change is possible. Building meaningful connections starts with understanding ourselves and the world around us. Embrace vulnerability. True connections are built on openness and honesty. Don't be afraid to show your authentic self to others. Practice empathy. Take the time to understand the perspectives and feelings of those around you. Empathy strengthens relationships and fosters mutual understanding. Cultivate gratitude. Appreciate the people who are already in your life, no matter how few they may be. Gratitude opens the door to deeper connections. Be proactive. Take initiative in reaching out to others and making plans. Friendships require effort and investment from both sides. Step out of your comfort zone. Challenge yourself to try new activities and meet new people. Growth happens when we push past our limitations. Learn from past experiences. Reflect on past relationships and understand what went wrong. Use those lessons to improve future interactions. Prioritize quality over quantity. It's better to have a few genuine friendships than a large group of superficial acquaintances. Be a good listener. Show genuine interest in others and give them space to share their thoughts and feelings. Set boundaries. Know your limits and communicate them effectively. Healthy boundaries are essential for maintaining positive relationships. Practice forgiveness. Holding on to grudges only weighs you down. Learn to forgive others and yourself for past mistakes. Stay positive. Focus on the good in yourself and in others. Optimism attracts positivity and creates a welcoming atmosphere. Seek support. Don't hesitate to reach out for help if you're struggling. Friends, family, and professionals are there to support you. Be patient. Building meaningful connections takes time and effort. Don't get discouraged by setbacks or delays. Stay humble. Recognize that everyone has their own struggles and insecurities. Treat others with kindness and understanding. Celebrate differences. Diversity enriches our lives and opens us up to new perspectives. Embrace the uniqueness of those around you. Practice self-care. Take care of your physical, emotional, and mental well-being. You can't be a good friend if you're not taking care of yourself first. Be reliable. Keep your promises and show up for others when they need you. Trust is the foundation of any strong friendship. Show appreciation. Express gratitude for the people who enrich your life. A simple thank you can go a long way. Keep learning. Stay curious and open-minded. There's always more to discover about yourself and the world around you. Remember, you are not alone. No matter how lonely you may feel, there are always people who care about you. Reach out and let them in. By implementing these principles into your life, you can cultivate deep and meaningful friendships that bring joy, support, and fulfillment. So, go ahead, take the first step, and watch as your social circle blossoms. Remember, friendship is a journey, and you're never alone on the path.